Guys, there's some big, big changes that went out last night on the uh, Season of Discovery build. So Season of Discovery is coming out November 30th. It's basically the Classic Plus beta. They're taking Classic WoW. They're going to be changing some stuff with it. They're going to be adding some new abilities. Uh, they have like a rune system now. Phase one of that is going to start November 30th. Yeah, it's capped at level 25 and all that stuff. It's going to be great. But there were some changes that went out on the build that is currently available. I want to go over uh, what is in this build and what was changed with some of the runes for Season of Discovery. So let's get started. So. Obviously, we're going to go and we're going to take a look at the Paladin stuff, but they changed stuff for every class. It looks like for Druids, you have Glove Runes, you have uh, Chest Runes, and you have right, Leg Runes. And that's that's what we've seen so far. So they've changed the Wild Growth Runes right here on, uh, I'm on Wowhead, and Wowhead actually shows and compares both of them, which is good. So it shows the old one, uh, or this is what the new one does. So it heals all target party members within 40 yards of the target player. Uh, over seven seconds. So it looks like uh, for 34 divided by 100 times seven. The amount healed is applied quickly at first and then slows down as wild growth reaches its full duration. So, so it's a big AOE heal and it just looks like they buffed the range and they buffed the amount. It's just like a straight up buff. They thought it wasn't healing for enough or healing enough people. Engrave pants skull bash. Charge to a target within 13 yards and bash the target skull, interrupting spell casting and preventing any spell from being cast for two seconds. Shares a cooldown with Feral Charge. In the old build, Skull Bash and Feral Charge didn't actually share a cooldown. So they probably did that as, I mean, this is a replacement to Feral Charge. Normally, Feral Charge does the interrupt, but it doesn't, it doesn't have a stun. So uh, I think it's good that they actually made this shared because then you have Feral Charge and Skull Bash and you just be like flying around the map. Feral Charge is already able to be used in combat uh, as opposed to like a warrior charge that's not. Oh, they actually increased the spell power modifier on this too. So the amount of healing power that you have on wild growth actually goes up too. So it costs more mana and heals for more. That's basically all they did for Druid. For Hunter, Lone Wolf. Engrave your chest or robe with the Lone Wolf rune. So Lone Wolf, what, what Lone Wolf is, uh, they wanted to make a Hunter build for whenever you didn't have a pet. Let's say you wanted to not have a pet and you just wanted to be like a ranger or something, no pet, whatever, you just got your bow, all that and you just straight up do more damage. They dropped it from 25% to 15% increased damage with all attacks. My off the cuff opinion, when I saw that you deal 25% increased damage with all your attacks, if you don't use a pet, was that damn that's kind of high. What they probably did is they probably went in their testing and they probably realized they're like, yeah, actually they're doing way too much damage. I don't actually know what percentage of your damage as a hunter is your pet's damage. Probably roughly, like that's probably where you start, right? Like it's like if you're doing like your standard rotation, whatever, you have all your gear, this and that, how, how big of an impact does your pet make? I think that's a pretty fair way of looking at it. Engrave pants, sniper training, engrave your pants with sniper training. So this was changed. Uh, it got nerfed, your shot abilities gain 10% increased crit chance when you have not moved for the last six seconds. So it was 30% increased crit chance if you haven't moved for six seconds. And then they dropped it to 10. They probably thought 30 was just way the heck too high. Yeah, probably just way too high and they just nerfed it. So it's just this looks more like uh, they just did some flat out damage nerfs to hunters. For mages, rewind time. So all they did was they changed the cooldown on rewind time, which rewind time is part of like this healing mage build that people have been talking about. I personally am not a huge fan of healing mages. Giving mages the, the ability to heal or kind of having a healing mage build for me seems a little weird uh, and wow. I mean, some people are like, well, what about white mages, right? The concept of like a white mage, you see those in Final Fantasy and whatnot. But a white mage is essentially what a priest is. Personally, I think it's a little weird. What I would have liked to see them do with Season of Discovery, if they want to add like uh, some, some new type of gameplay option for Mage, I would have liked to see a Battle Mage. I think the idea of a Battle Mage and having a rune that took some percentage of your spell power as a coefficient and just, hey, every time you auto attack, you're doing flat damage, kind of like what Seal of Righteousness does for a Paladin. I think the idea of a Battle Mage would have been sick. So this just looks like a buff to the Healing Mage, one minute cooldown to 30 second cooldown. Okay. Holy, here's the juice, okay? Here's the juice, Paladin. Look at all this stuff for Paladin. Okay, let's get into it. Let's see what they did for Paladin. So Beacon of Light it used to be 60, so they nerfed the range from 60 yards to 40 yards. So Beacon of Light is insane. When I saw that they added Beacon of Light in vanilla, which is something that you see in, in, in uh, Wrath, any heal you cast on party or raid members will also heal the beacon for 100% of the amount healed. Only one target can be the Beacon of Light at a time, lasts for one minute. This is insane. I feel like if you give this to, I don't, I don't even know if they should have given this to Holy Paladins. I, like this is how strong this will be in vanilla with how, how powerful single target healing is for a Paladin in vanilla. The fact that this even exists is insane. 
So I don't think this is too bad of a nerf at all, going from 60 yards to 40 yard range. I think it's just 20 yard range decrease seems like a lot, but 60 yards is just insanely long. I don't even know if it should have been that long in the first place. So the next is Crusader Strike. So Crusader Strike received a nerf, and uh, this is actually part of the feedback that I gave Blizzard. Part of it, not all of it. When I had a chance to talk to somebody at Blizzard, I said, I actually don't think that Crusader Strike should be on a four second cooldown. I think it should be six, which is what it is in Burning Crusade. Now, I also said, I think that it should be six seconds and it should do more damage. Now, unfortunately, they didn't make it do any more damage either. So I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> like, like I, <laughs> damn it, man. So the reason why I think, the reason why I think that uh, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be four seconds and six seconds is better. Um, I look at what they should do is go with the general concept of what the original Paladin design is. Paladins were not designed to be like a spammy class, right? Open globals. I, I, we've talked to Kevin Jordan before. He's the original class designer for Vanilla WoW, for Burning Crusade, for Wrath of Lich King, and, and he actually mained a Paladin in Vanilla. He, play, he mained a Paladin in Vanilla. And I, I do really believe that having it at six seconds instead of four seconds is better for what the Paladin is and the design of the kit. But my feedback was a little bit longer cooldown because four seconds is less than it even is in Burning Crusade, right? Like you, you don't, like a Paladin being more spammy in vanilla than in Burning Crusade just seems weird naturally, right? But even from a design perspective, Paladins are designed around reactive gameplay and proactive gameplay. And what that comes from is having your globals open. You're not spamming everything constantly to, to where your, your globals are just always being used. And that's a lot of vanilla in general, but but specifically for paladins. And that's that's exactly what Kevin Jordan said as well. Like, that's how we designed the class. You're throwing your blessing. You're blessing a freedoming this guy. You have a you step back. You're throwing out flash of lights. You're throwing holy lights. Stun this guy. Repentance this guy. There's a lot of proactive and reactive gameplay that paladins are about. I do think six seconds is better but I, I don't think that it should have been nerfed and have the same damage. Now I will say this, there is a chance, just like with Hunters, Hunters, it seems like they just got a flat damage nerf in some categories. I played Season Discovery. I played the demo at BlizzCon and Paladin damage was so insanely high. Like I started like basically screwing around and trolling and just, just trying to goof off halfway through it. I, like I tried to wipe, I started trying to wipe the group and just was like, this is, we're doing so much damage. Can we even wipe, like, can we even wipe? This is ridiculous. And I just started like pulling random stuff or whatever. I think it was pretty clear that with that current tuning that I was doing way more damage than everyone else. So maybe in their testing, they felt like, look, Paladin actually is doing way too much damage. Personally, what I would like to see from Crusader Strike, I would like to see Crusader Strike be a six second cooldown but I also wanted it to be moved to regenerate 3% of your maximum mana. And I would like Crusader Strike to do holy damage. I think if Crusader Strike did holy damage, that'd be sick. Um, it looks like it's a physical strike as of right now. I would have liked for it to do holy damage and maybe a higher percentage, either like 100% weapon damage or maybe 75% holy damage. What I like about it doing holy damage is it cuts through your armor and also you get the benefit of Sanctity Aura as well. I also want Crusader Strike to refresh judgments like it does in Burning Crusade. I think Crusader Strike refreshing judgments like it does in Burning, Burning Crusade is a lot of value that you're missing out on for having a rep paladin because that way you can have light, wisdom, crusader, everything up at the same time. I, I, think, I think it not refreshing judgments is, you're also kind of losing out on something. The template should be Burning Crusade. I think that's what a lot of like vanilla Paladin players, classic Paladin players uh, look at. I know some people like more Wrath. Wrath is more retail. Wrath is when it starts to shift more towards the retail Paladin. Burning Crusade is more classic, is more vanilla. Divine Sacrifice. Divine Sacrifice cannot be used while you're under the effects of Blessing of Protection, Divine Shield or Divine Protection and prevents you from being targeted by those abilities while it's active. Okay, couple things to take away from here. That is a massive nerf to Divine Sacrifice because you get a lot of value out of Divine Sack bubble, and then you're just absorbing 30% of all damage for the entire group. It's very hard to say because we haven't played Season of Discovery yet, and we haven't seen everything in action. We haven't seen, I mean, outside of the demo, we haven't seen everything being used and how all the abilities work and everything. I think it's probably okay that they nerf this. I'm just gonna keep it real. To me, it seems like Divine Sacrifice as it was in vanilla WoW, way too strong. 
So this is the big one that people keep talking about, uh, the changes to Martyrdom. People talk about Crusader Strike too, but I think, I think Martyrdom is, is probably a bigger one. So with Seal of Martyrdom, what you see here is it's a seal buff that goes and it causes each of your melee attacks to deal 30% weapon damage. It used to deal up to three nearby targets, so it gets rid of your cleave. It gets rid of your cleave and now it's single target. So just to clarify, in, in Burning Crusade, it does 35% damage, 35% weapon damage, but you lose health equal to 10% of the damage inflicted. While the seal is active, your party members within 30 yards gain mana equal to 10% of the damage you take from the seal. How this works in Burning Crusade, you don't have the mana regen. In Burning Crusade, you do 35% of weapon damage. A lot of times, again, I say 50% because it's half the damage of seal of command. Single target, and you do lose health equal to 10% of the damage inflicted. So this is, this is more similar to the Burning Crusade version, but I think it'd be nice if it did the same amount of damage at 35%. And uh, I also think it would be nice if they did something about this, because I just, I feel like this is so strong. I feel like the amount of mana regen is insane. Like that, to me, that's so much mana regen that it, it, that it might make Judgment of Wisdom completely worthless. Or uh, you have Judgment of Wisdom and this running, and then you just have so much mana. Uh, while this zeal is active, your party members within 40 yards gain mana equal to 10%. Oh, I misinterpreted this. This is actually much less than what I thought. Yeah, I gotta learn to read, guys. I gotta learn to read. I actually misinterpreted this. Okay, so maybe this isn't that much at all. Because what you're looking at, it's damage you take. I was thinking about it being the same as this, damage of the damage inflicted. So what that would mean, 30% of weapon damage, then you take 10% of that, you take 10% of that. 10% of 10% of 30%. So it's actually incredibly low. So my whole argument about this being too strong, maybe in get, getting rid of Judgment of Wisdom, is kind of a moot point. I mean, to be honest, then I, I kind of don't really have that much of a problem with this. It sucks that you lose your cleave, but I would have liked to see a little bit of a damage increase to 35% uh, after this nerf. So, okay, Hand of Reckoning. This is your taunt. So there's a change to the taunt that's made for Paladins. Oh, this is just a... <laughs> this, is just <laughs> this is just fixing a typo. Yeah, they just they just fixed a typo. Okay, I'm like I'm like what the hell? This nerf isn't nearly as bad as what I thought initially. Uh, I would still like Crusader Strike to do either more damage or to do holy damage, and I also would like for it to regenerate three percent of maximum mana as opposed to two percent because of the cooldown change, uh, which I do agree with. I do agree with six second cooldown versus four second. I just think that these numbers should be tuned up to accommodate for that a little bit better. And I think that Seal of Martyrdom should do just a little bit more damage to match the Burning Crusade number. Maybe what they're thinking for like the playoff of that is, is the fact that you get a tiny bit of mana. I also want Seal of Martyrdom. I, I want Seal Twisting. I want it to be able to twist. If you can two-way twist between Martyrdom and Command, if you can two-way twist Blood and Command, oh my gosh. Two-way twist, Blood and Command, Crusader Strike on a six second cooldown, Judgment on an eight second cooldown. You got your Consecrate on an eight second cooldown. Damn, now, now, now we're talking. Now we're talking, okay? That's what I wanna see. That, that's the dream scenario. But they have to enable seal twisting for this, which on the demo it didn't have. So that's it for Paladin. It looks like Paladin's had the most wordy changes. Next up, we have Priests, Circle of Healing. Heals, heals all of target's party members, par, so, blah, blah, blah. heals all of the target player's party members within 40 yards, so they made the circle way bigger. So they increased the mana cost, very similar to Druid. They increased the mana cost, increased the range, and it looks like they increased the amount of healing as well. Uh, strength of Soul. Engrave your chest or robe with strength of, strength of Soul, where lesser heal, heal, greater heal, and flash heal reduce the remaining duration of weakened soul on targets they heal by four seconds. Oh, that's cool. So what that, that essentially does is um, every time you heal somebody, let's say you shield them, every time you heal them, that debuff that you can't shield them again goes down by four seconds. Pretty cool. In addition, targets of your power word shield will gain a rage. Oh my gosh. That's a huge buff. Yo, that is a huge buff. In addition, targets of your power word shield will gain rage from taking damage despite the damage being absorbed. Oh my gosh. And Righteous Fury will trigger from damage absorbed by your power word shield as if it were a heal. Oh my gosh, that is huge. This is like one of the, the like oldest, like tale as old as time things about Vanilla WoW is if a warrior has an absorbed shield up, they don't generate rage. In addition to fixing that with Strength of Soul, if you're a paladin, all the damage that you absorb 
will cast with Righteous Fury up as if it were a heal. Heal have a, have a very reduced threat modifier. I, off the top of my head, I think it's 25%, but then you have that, then I'm assuming it's gonna count as holy, so then you'll get the Righteous Fury bonus, uh, so you'll get some kind of crazy number calculation there. But that's gonna make Paladin Threat even better when they're getting hit than it already is, when it's already huge. Paladin Threat and Vanilla is actually huge right now, um, even before Sod. I think Paladin tanks are gonna be like, just gods. I think, I think Paladins in general are gonna be insane in Season of Discovery. I can't wait. I mean, you guys know me, I do everything Paladin. I do, I do Ret, I do Brot. I, I haven't done healing in a long time, but I used to even do healing, but I just haven't needed to as much. I mean, this is insane, dude. If you're a warrior tank, if you're a Brot Paladin tank, this is massive for your priests. Wow, dude, that is that is probably the biggest single change that came out of this, I think, as far as, as, far as the buff so far is this. The biggest nerf is this Divine Sacrifice nerf, which I think probably should work this way. I mean, it probably shouldn't have even been a consideration. Rogue, Saber Slash. So Saber Slash is viciously slash an enemy for 130% weapon damage. Uh, so it's, a, it's an instant strike with a bleed uh, that stacks up to three times and gives a combo point. All they did was they made this cost 55 energy instead of four, they nerfed the cost, so they buffed it. It used to be 55 energy and they made it 45 energy. So a little, little bit of a buff for Rogue's Saber Slash. Oh my, holy, okay, here we go. Paladins and Shamans, dude, classic. Classic, of course the Paladins and Shamans have the most notes. So for Shaman, oh, this is just a typo. Shield Mastery, I think I did, I did enhance Shaman tanking. So whenever I did enhance Shaman tanking in the Season of Discovery beta, the demo that we did at BlizzCon, uh, I had really big mana problems. And what they told me to do, uh, whenever, I, whenever I talked to the devs, they were like, okay, take these, take, take these runes. And uh, I believe, what type of rune is Water Shield? Cause I think, I think it was a glove rune and they were telling me to take Molten Blast. It is glove, okay. So they were telling me to take Molten, molten Blast for tanking. So I was, I was trying to go through with what their suggested runes were for tanking. And uh, I was like, dude, my mana sucks. So eventually like towards the end of the run, what did I do is I switched from Molten Blast to Water Shield and my mana was way better and my threat generation was already so high that I didn't even need Molten Blast. I think they've probably recognized this and that wasn't intended. They probably want you to use Molten Blast. So Shield Mastery, which you're obviously gonna take your chest, <clears throat> they've increased the mana regeneration to each time you block, you it used to be 4%, now it's 8%. So they basically doubled the amount of mana you get from each block. Um, this is a good change. This is, in my opinion, having played it, I think this is something they probably should do. If the intended way of playing uh, was using multi, uh, molten blast instead of water shield, so yeah, I think I think that's a, that's a solid change. Shamanistic rage. Okay, what's the difference here? So what the what the difference is with shamanistic rage? Your party members within forty yards will also receive ten percent of the mana that you receive this way. So how shamanistic rage works is it's a um, it's a wall, right? So it reduces all damage you take by twenty percent and it regenerates, and you regenerate mana every second for 15 seconds, mana regenerated per second is equal to 15% of your attack power, 10% of your spell power, or 6% of your healing power, whichever value is greatest. So this is like a, this is like a big mana regen cooldown, and it's like a wall if you're tanking. Uh, and dude, this is actually nuts for PvP too. So it looks like the, the added utility of Shamanistic Rage is that they're also going to make it to where 10% of the mana that you get back is also going to go back to everybody else. And it's it's useful to any any spec of Shaman, yeah, so so that's gonna be great. Grave your pants with Way of Earth. So let's see, Rockbiter, okay, so this Way of Earth is for Rockbiter weapon, let's see how they changed it. While Rockbiter weapon is active on your main hand weapon, you deal 100% increase, oh, so they changed it from 100% increased threat to 50% increased threat, 30% increased health, and 10% reduced damage. So, so Rockbiter weapon is going to be your tanking weapon like your tanking buff for a shaman, for an enhanced shaman, they probably saw that they were generating way too much threat and they just reduced the threat by 50%. That doesn't surprise me based on from whenever I played enhanced shaman tank. I thought my threat gen was insane whenever I got rid of Molten Blast and I switched it with Water Shield to make up for not getting enough mana back from Shield Mastery. I, I didn't talk to anybody about this, but th this is what I, th those are the observations that I had while uh, while playing the beta. So they've probably just gotten those same sort of, they, they probably had that same sort of opinion after after test, doing their own internal testing. No, that's cool. It looks like they're basically just rebalancing how this works with the intent being that you generate a lot of threat with Molten Blast and that you use Molten Blast to generate threat.
What spec will tank Warlock be? I think it was Demonology. But speaking of Warlock, let's go into Warlocks. With Warlocks, what do they do? So Reign of Fire also leaves a Lake of Fire on the ground. You don't gain a Lake of fi Fire ability. Master Channeler. You don't gain a Master Channeler ability. So this just looks like, this looks like just a, a tooltip fix, right? And it looks like they also reduce the amount of threat generated from Metamorphosis. From the Warlock Demon form, they reduced your threat gen to 50%. I didn't play this, so I don't have any firsthand experience of how, how good the threat generation was. But again, they probably in their own internal testing thought they were just gaining too too much threat too easily so they just reduced it no big changes for warlocks nerf uh nerf the threat gen a little bit okay warrior <clears throat> consumed by rage uh it looks like this was nerfed it enrages you and grants you a 20 percent melee damage bonus for 12 seconds or up to a maximum of 12 swings did i say 20 seconds i meant 12 seconds uh or up to a maximum of 12 swings after you exceed 80 range so if you are getting to the point where you have over 80 rage, you have like a big damage bonus, which is kind of sick, right? Consumed by rage. And if you if you go over, like the idea is, is you want to constantly try and like, you want to get back up over 80 rage every 12 seconds. Is there is there no cooldown on this? That's like a cool way of playing. If like the idea is that you keep trying to fill up uh, and then you go and you pull your rage up to 80 and then you dump it and then you pull it back up to 80 and then you dump it. That's kind of cool. But they just nerf the amount of damage that you do on it. 20% to 25%, not the end of the world. Engrave your pants with Furious Thunder Rune. So Furious Thunder was changed. Oh, Thunder Climb now increases the time between the attacks by an additional 6%. It now can be used in any stance, which Thunder Climb was not able to be used in any stance before. But now it also does 50% more threat. So Furious Thunder, it's being used as a AoE threat tool for warriors, which are already considered pretty poor when it comes to AoE threat. Now at the high end, there's a lot of different stuff you can do in Vanilla WoW with like engineering or different items and stuff to make warrior AoE threat as good as possible. But they're considered to be like not very good AoE tanks. The, the idea behind Furious Thunder is that it makes Thunderclap more powerful for more threat gen. Also, the fact that they put Furious Thunder on the pants is kind of hilarious. Yeah, so your pants now have Furious Thunder is, uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that looks, like, that looks like all the changes that were leaked on uh, Season Discovery. Some buffs, some nerfs. It looks like Hunters got, got hit pretty hard with some things, but it's hard to have a, a real strong opinion on the numbers side of things with any of these changes because we haven't really played it in depth enough to know, hey, do they need this, do they not need this? So we kind of have to trust their internal testing. Now we can talk about things from a design perspective on like, is it good design to do this generally? Is it bad design to do this generally? Um, and, and I think that's really more so what we're looking at with this. So uh, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, uh, do you guys think these are generally good changes, generally bad changes? Do the buffs and the nerfs seem right? Uh, for me, I think the Paladin nerfs, like the, the Divine Sacrifice nerf is, is, in my opinion, just from a design perspective, I think it's very justified. Um, I would like to see Crusader Strike tweaked up a little bit to make up for that six second cooldown. I think six second cooldown is fine. Again, it makes sense, but I think that it should do holy damage or it should do a little bit more damage physical. Uh, either do holy damage or it should do a little bit more physical damage instead. Um, and I think it should give you 3% mana instead of 2% mana. But again, we don't really know because we haven't played. Um, I also, this is this is the thing. I'm just begging, dude. I'm begging, I'm begging, I'm begging. Please make Seal of Martyrdom able to be twisted with command. It's just, it's so, that, that gameplay that we had in Burning Crusade, it's just, it was incredible. It's the most fun for me. My personal account is that it was the most fun that I ever had playing Paladin, playing Rhett Paladin in, in PvE. And I think there's a lot of classic paladins that feel the same way. I know there's a lot of people like that like the the new Wrath of the Lich King style, retail style. Uh, there's a lot of people that like that. But for, for me as a vanilla Burning Crusade paladin, incredible gameplay. So fun. So I really, really hope that if you're taking away that cleave, you're giving us back uh, that seal twisting in the same vein that we had with Burning Crusade. Judgment, eight seconds. Consecrate, eight seconds. Uh, Crusader Strike six seconds and then constantly like twisting like this, dude. The two way twist, oh, it's gonna be amazing. I can't wait. So, if you guys watch this on YouTube again, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Make sure to like the video. I hope you guys are excited for Season of Discovery as I am, as excited as I am. I'm going to be streaming it on Twitch November 30th. I'm always streaming, doing stuff. I mean, we're, leading up to Season of Discovery, I might be gone a few days with Thanksgiving and 
Uh, I'm planning some some things, right? Maybe a subathon is coming. Maybe maybe we're gonna do like some kind of week long stream or something. I don't know. But, but Check out my stream on Twitch, SFAN TV. Subscribe. Turn on your notifications. Twitch, Twitter, Discord, Reddit. Everything is SFAN TV. Come join. Be a part of the community. All that stuff. I hope you guys enjoy, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Hope you're as excited for season of discovery as I am. Cause Wow is back, baby. Wow is back, baby.